Howdy. Uh, my name is Amber, uh, and I am a business and technology librarian at the Boston Public Library. We're just having a little technical di di uh, difficulty today getting a hold of a guest. So hold on one second while I pull that up. But I wanted to thank you for joining me this morning. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the information and see if I can try to get my colleague um, sent here. So, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to s make sure that he can get into the invite I sent him. So hold on one second, and I appreciate your patience. So copy invitation. Let's see if that works. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful morning and um, trying to stay cool. Man, uh, it was hot yesterday. Uh, oops, I don't want to be in this, do I? Yes. So let me just see. I'm just going to send this new message. It's blinking. And uh, technology did not want to cooperate with me today. Um, so today we're going to be talking about causes and effects, specifically about nonprofits and um, and how to support uh, folks in our local communities. So uh, while we get that set up, let me. Oh, hold on. Send. Send. So I just sent that, and hopefully my guest will be joining me soon. My guest is actually, and you'll see him right here, um, is, oh no, right here is uh, my colleague, Anthony Viola. He is the nonprofit, um, nonprofit, uh, liaison for our uh, library so he is the business innovation librarian and um and i just sent the link to them guys so let's see if they get it and see if it works hoping that they can see it so, ah i have a doorbell beautiful this works do 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 now let's see if i can Come on, open up the meeting. Yay! So let's see if my colleague is, is able to join. All right. Hi. Yay. Hey. Yay. All right. That was our nice. deal. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Amanda, right. our amazing AV team. Um, and yep. thank you, Anthony, um, for, sh uh, for, for getting uh, on with me today. I really appreciate it. Um, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to mute your media a video just because um, I don't want to. Or can you mute your video? Because my computer is going to like blow up if the video is coming through. Nope. You muted yourself. Mute your video. Cool. And then if you could just unmute yourself. Yay. Okay. So, um, Anthony, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Loud and clear. Beautiful. Great, 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 great. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> so that's exciting. I guess we can have guests now. Um, oh, look, I'm a floating head. Yeah. Uh, I put you I put you uh, right here. I, I can't tell my lefts from my rights with this, but I put you right here um, uh, above me. So um, you can hang out. And you're, you're, you're a little circle kind of watching over me like a cherub, just like staring down from the sky, you know, just <laughs> hanging out. Um, so, um, why don't you introduce yourself? I already gave kind of a brief overview a little bit, but not really. Um, so why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. You had your hands full, so I can imagine you were, <laughs> don't know what you might have said, how you would have introduced me. Hello, everyone. My name is Anthony Viola. I am the business innovations librarian here at uh, KBLIC. 
Um, I am also in charge of one of our, my favorite products that we offer, our uh, Candid Database, which is sometimes referred to as Foundations Directory and Foundation uh, Center. And it is a database of grant funders by which you can search for your, uh, uh, your nonprofit for finding grants and funds. And I uh, enjoy connecting those who need the funds with those who want to give the funds away. Uh, it is a great feeling to bring those two together. And I feel, especially in these times, we need it more than ever. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to uh, showing you all how to do that and working with you all in future, as well as also helping you all with business needs. And, and as my title entails business innovation, we've got a few other charities and uh, business incubators that we're working with. And I'm hoping that uh, in future sessions, Amber and I will be meeting to discuss those as well. Cool. Um, well, thank you very much again for joining me today, Anthony. Um, despite all the crazy technical difficulties. <laughs> oh my God, my computer was like blowing up. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so let's talk about what cost, what is Kirstein Business Library? Got ahead of ourselves. For those of you joining for the first time, the Kirstein Business Library and Innovation Center or KBLIC is the library's uh, specific suite of services that we help folks who uh, want to start a passion project or a business. So we sort of help them from ideation to like implementation. So like if you have an idea, we can help you do the market research. And then we also provide the space, the tools and the resources that you can use um, to sort of make your, your project a reality uh, through mentoring, through one-on-one -on -one help, like today um or uh and i'll talk about that uh at the end a little bit and i'll plug anthony has drop-ins every friday for grant seekers who are looking for help um as well as um, boutique research that we will do for folks um so coffee with cablic is meant to sort of connect folks with some of the resources that we have here at the kirstein business library and to sort of reach folks um, where they're at, which is at home right now. <laughs> uh, so last episode, we spoke about how to help uh, small business owners in your community, specifically uh, minority-owned businesses and businesses owned by uh, women, uh, folks uh, with disabilities, veteran status, uh, and how to find those particular businesses. Today's focus, we're, we'll be talking about nonprofits, hence Anthony's uh, uh, visit here today on the channel uh, and he will be t uh, chatting with us about how uh, we can search for grants at home. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, if you haven't already you can share your coffee uh, mug with us. Um, I drank my coffee actually already today but I had a nice iced coffee because it's hot, <laughs> very hot, um, but um, I drank it. What are you drinking right now, Anthony? Uh, probably my fourth cup of the pot I made this morning. Oh, um, man. I, I get up early and then I tend to flag slightly mid-morning. So I always have extra made. And then I've got a whole line. I've got several cups. I've got a uh, China cup that I drink out of, but I've got all my um, uh, metal thermos cups lined up because I also don't feel like keeping the coffee maker sure. running all morning long to keep it hot. I'm nothing if not frugal when it comes to electricity. <laughs> so I grab your, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to put your uh, uh, there we go. Yep. on the Chiron, but I um, I have it on my phone. So, <laughs> yes. you know. That's um, my Campbell's soup mug. Oh. It's, it's a vintage ad on the side. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I love like old soup mugs. Yeah. yeah. So those are pretty fun. Um, <laughs> and, in fact, actually, like I have a giant where is it? I'm too lazy to go get it. But I have a giant mug um, that I typically eat soup out of, but it's like a Boston mug. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Um, so going back to today's topic, um, what, we, what we are going to talk about is how KBLIC uh, can help you and your nonprofit uh, for a variety of ways. We can help you find funding. We can also talk about you getting your uh, sort of feet on the ground if you're look at, thinking of starting one. And then researching for, ah, typo, boo. 
Oh, well. Uh, researching uh, a nonprofit. So if you were thinking of donating, uh, some resources uh, for that. So um, I'm just going to transition back. Um, so, Anthony, you had the um, pleasure recently of attending a workshop um, by Candid, and I wanted to yes. talk a little bit about that today, actually. Yes. Candid is the parent organization, uh, newly named, so you might have, hear of them on, on Foundations Director under other names, of FDO Online um, and GuideStar, who have merged. And they have just produced their 10-year uh, pl planning document, so to speak, for uh, into 2030. And it is in direct response of two major factors, uh, COVID-19 and obviously all the social unrest that has resulted uh, with all that is going on with Black Lives Matter and the murders and the issues we're dealing with. And they have done some research on their end and on unsurprising to them, but something they'd like to rectify. They had seen a lot of uh, charity work, charity funding going out, but not that many mm -hmm. high numbers to uh, minority uh, foundations. Mm -hmm. So they're working on trying to bring, A, bring uh, applications up in that area, because these, the foundations directory is made up of grantors who want to give away money, who by law have to give away their money in order to remain a grant maker. Right. And uh, their their champion phrase is ask early, ask often. The worst that'll happen is they won't be able to help you to, this year, they'll help, help you next year. But they want to make a impact in social change in the area. Mm -hmm. They want to address a lot of what is going on. And let's it combines the two areas because a lot of the minority communities are being the hardest hit by COVID-19 and COVID-19 is affecting the economy. So we're, they're trying to be as quickly and incisively proactive in that area as well. Sure. And they've tasked uh, our, I'm a Finn Foundation Information Networker. Uh, they've tasked us with trying to educate and help in that area as much as possible. Hence, uh, we'll be doing a lot, I'll be doing a lot more online trainings sure. uh, throughout. And uh, they also have a lot of great online information networks that I'll show you when we log into the network, but this is the document. I sent it to Amber and she, I'm sure she can post into chat here at one point, but you can see their goals. Um, they're, yeah. they're lofty, they're, but they're achievable and they're a direct result of wanting, wanting to do good and improve in doing good, which just is a nice phrase to hear. It is a nice phrase to hear. And um, in general, um, a lot of the nonprofits that they're talking about are traditionally in underserved communities and just underserved in general because of a few reasons. Um, Third Sector New England, which is a nonprofit that helps um, other nonprofits sort of capacity build, um, released this report from their learning lab. And I can post the link to this in the description, but it talks specifically sort of touching on some of the things that Anthony has brought up um about uh focusing on like how to reach marginalized communities so it was a, a couple year research effort that actually ended up getting posted around this april so the timing was pretty good um and basically it reaffirms what candid uh is trying to do um and the, it addresses some of the systematic um uh, issues with supporting uh, nonprofits in uh, marginalized communities, uh, such as um, organizational readiness um, and some structural differences that occasionally uh, appear in organizations that uh, have less than a million in a budget. So sort of like how they can actually achieve um, their goals or their stated mission and how they can actually, um, uh, you know, sort of receive the funds. Because there's actually a bias, uh, and this report goes into that. There's a bias uh, when it comes to offering money just because uh, – Many grant makers, and we, we might see this later, sort of require certain nonprofits to have a particular staffing plan uh, or, or whatnot. Uh, so uh, 
it's one of those things where it, there's many moving parts. So it does, if I can, it does become a bit of a catch twenty two. Uh, yeah. Applying for a grant takes time and effort and staffing, and if you don't have that money already it's more difficult to apply for a grant that would give you the money to do such. So it's a constant, constant hamster on a wheel. Exactly. And it's just like many grant, uh, grant, uh, not seekers, um, uh, funders are looking for a proven track record of success, but what does that look like? And then if you're a small organization, you might not have the necessary data or the capacity to showcase the data that you do have to, to sort of, um to to justify the funding which becomes sort of you know problematic especially since you know those groups tend not to get supported in a particular yeah. Way. yeah so um so this is from the candid uh 2030 report um and you can go through this and then you can also find um, third Sector New England's report on uh, capacity building needs and challenges. Um, and they do a literature review, basically, where there's actually very not much written about how to support these folks um, who are trying to help their communities, which are traditionally marginalized. So um, I don't know if we want to start switching to how we would search for a grant um using the library's database or if you have any other comments are there are questions about fdo in the chat let's take a look uh let's see oh someone loved the doorbell oh. let's see. <laughs> yeah. i believe uh tina johnson is asking our trainings one-on-one -on -one or on online classroom settings i am willing to do both mm -hmm. i have a drop in every friday for the rest of the summer uh, Fridays at 11, and that is posted on our website with an open link. But if you email us at ask at bpl.org, it will be funneled to me and I will set up a one-on-one -on -one session with you. Sure. And uh, I, am, I am working from home and ever <laughs> at my computer as all of us are, so I'm more than happy to help out. And uh, uh, if you even just have a quick question, ask would be the best way to funnel in that information and uh, we will get back to ASAP. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that up on the screen just so you can see that so folks can see that uh, information. Again, it's askatbpl.org. And like Anthony said, there will be drop-ins every Friday at 11 for the rest of the summer. Sherry Murphy has asked, how long does it take for a grant to get approved? And that is a one-on-one -on -one indiv individualized process. Uh, it depends how how quickly you can get a grant application to a funder if you meet their needs and how quickly the funder can turn around and apply those funds there's not a set time um unfortunately mm -hmm. each each of these and that's another thing that we were talking about as organizations are usually juggling more than one grant application at a time because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket you want as much funding coming in as possible mm -hmm. and that again requires uh staff time and maybe more than one staff person and more often than not it's usually a volunteer who's handling life and volunteering yeah. but um i mean the bigger the bigger your ship the more weapons you have in your arsenal the more grant the more chance you have a couple of grant writers or dedicated people the more quickly you can move forward but to get to that big size you need the funding to begin with so as we said that can be a bit of catch-22 but fdo foundation structure online mm -hmm is a very easy tool to search and get quick results and that is where you can get your results and maybe farm them out to people in your team and say everyone take a look at one grant grant funder and and we'll, we'll and uh we can show you how to get there and also um, they're very big on networking it's like finding a job so they do list who's who in these grant organizations so you can say oh do i know this someone from college or from a board. The more ears you can whisper into, the more eyeballs you can put your name and organization in front of, the better. The same as in job seeking. Sure. And it's that old adage, it's not what you know, it's who you know in a way. Yeah. Uh, in a way, and this touches on the problems that we were talking about earlier, that who you know part, like 
for an organization that just has like let's say a working board and no staff you know they might be sort of stretched with their own personal things and then to go do this sort of networking uh can be difficult and on top of all their other uh challenges that they have so it, it really um in a way it's sort of funny how difficult it is to get the money even though uh funders really want to give it away yes um, so Flop 2683 has asked if we um help with writing grant proposals we have had workshops in the past with grant proposals and on um candid site which we will show you there are several online courses uh most of them free for training on getting started in grant proposal writing and we intend to offer some grant proposal classes in the future as well. Actually, uh, I'll just pull up GrantSpace right now. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So um, if you go to the GrantSpace website, uh, you can go under the trainings and you can see there's like a number of on-demand trainings um, as well as um, uh, live trainings that you can go to. Some of those you have to pay though, correct? Correct. Not all, but the, the one, the, there are some very good free ones, and they do offer um, uh, introduction to grant writing. Mm -hmm. They do offer, and the, the ones you have to pay for aren't that expensive, depending on your budget. And I think they have offered in the past uh, two or three session mm -hmm. classes where they've hired a grant writer to go through the process of writing grants. And I, I correct me if I'm wrong, Amber, we had done something similar to that in the past at KBL, hadn't we? Have we uh, brought in a grant writer? It yes. was prior to my tenure, so I don't want to make false assumptions here. We did have folks come in and teach about grant writing. And uh, just so you know, so folks can see, I've pulled up the self-paced uh, classes on proposal writing. So that's something you can access. And you don't need a library card for this. This is free yes. provided by Candid on grantspace.org. So um, you can access This is a great here. site. I yeah. highly recommend you all bookmark it for your organization. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's lots of uh, cool content on here. Have you listened to the podcast? I have not as of yet, but I've been attending so many of the um, FDO meetings. I feel like I've, I've heard the voices that are podcast, but by all, by all means we should show them where that is. Yeah, so if you go under training, you can click on podcast uh, and it should be right here. Ah, and what's cool is they do have it in Spanish. Um, ah. So depending on the content that you're looking for. Um, and it looks like most of these episodes are free. So that's exciting. So this is another opportunity for folks to learn. Uh, and I like that you can sort of sort by experience level too. Yes, this is how I've been keeping busy uh, <laughs> during the off hours from COVID-19, just sharpening my skills here. Yeah. So, all right, Flower seems to be satisfied with our question uh, or answer. Uh, thank you, Flower. So, um, the other thing I was going to say is just watch our calendar uh, and you can always just go to the Boston Public Library website and you can go to the events here um, online and we're waiting for it to load. Uh, my Wi-Fi has been fun today. I uh, think everyone on the planet is on Wi-Fi working from home and it's just universally slowing everything down. I I don't, I think it's just cause it's super hot and my, you know, when you get lethargic when you're hot, I feel like both my uh, laptops are just like, uh, I just want to laze around today. Um, but what you can do is you can search by event types let me hit show more and you can see all the Kirstein and Business Library and Innovation Center classes uh, on our events page. Um, and this includes grant seeking, uh, financial literacy, all of the drop ins, uh, and then even some uh, interesting uh, opportunities that we have um, with uh, General Assembly. Um, so you can check this out um, and uh, this is just on the website and every event we have will be free. So if we were to host a grant seeking event, uh, it would be free to the public. So 
Let's see. And then back to, where is it? Here we go. Um, I didn't know if he wanted to show people how to get to the Foundation Directory Online Essentials. Oh, yes. can you explain the difference between FDO Online and FDO Essentials? Yes, correct. The name is kind of the, the level here. It's like having a um, membership leveled in different products. So normally, to use Foundations Directory Online, you, our subscription is such that you would have to come into the main branch and come in from our physical location servers, uh, show that you are using the BPL's membership. Mm -hmm. And COVID-19 has kind of made that kind of difficult for everyone <laughs> to show up. <laughs> oh, man. So, and and uh, Candid is aware of that. It's happened nationwide. So uh, for right now till August 31st, and they will revisit and expand if necessary beyond that, they have graciously allowed online access to the program. And what they have allowed access to is their introductory level called Foundations Directory Online Essentials. It's the same product. Uh, it just has a few less bells and whistles, but nothing that would hinder you from being able to do a search and get started on your uh, journey into finding some grants. But uh, to get to it, we would go to our website and then instead of search catalog, you could do search website or do you wanna, do you have a prefer preferred way to get there, Amber? Uh, not really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's use the top. Cause I actually okay. like doing this. Um, All right. So I changed catalog to website and then I'm just gonna be lazy and type in foundation. Yep, because as I said, there's a couple of old tags. It's been listed as Foundation Center, Foundation Directory. So Foundation Center. And I'm just going to click on it. And my computer is going to load. And there's a nice note here uh, saying like access outside of BPL locations to the Foundation Directory Online Essential Product is graciously permitted by the vendor during the duration of our closure. I will say though, if you end up standing outside the central library and you can get the Wi-Fi, you can access the full uh, product, but that requires you to hang out in Copley Square. But um, I, I will, I, I did want to plug that like, even though if your local branch is not open, the Wi-Fi should be on. So if you're looking for access to Wi-Fi, that is something that it, or need, know someone who's looking for access to Wi-Fi, you can point them to any of our locations and they should be able to get the Wi-Fi outside the building to access whatever resources they need. Um, As we pointed out in the past, there's even um, electrical outlets in those standing tables outside the main entrance. Oh, yes. The civic table outside the Johnson, Lib um, the Johnson building of the Central Library. Um, it's that stacked table. Um, it does have outlets. Yes. So here we are. Aha, there we go. And you'll notice up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, there's essential listed under foundations directory yep. online. Um, if you want to click on the resources tab over on the right, that you can see the it'll oh. pull up four, the four organizations. Sorry, the Zoom box was in the way, so that's why. I'm, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, it's like what? All right. For those of you, resources will pull up all the organizations associated with uh, with Candid and one of them being Grant Space, but also they have um, uh, Candid Grant Space, Philanthropy News Digest, and Issue Lab. So mm -hmm. those of you who want to do research in the area, you could subscribe to all of those sites in addition to Grant Space. Uh, I, I greatly like uh, Issue Lab's articles and Philanthropy News Digest is a way to follow all the current trends that are going on, which we've already touched on. Everyone's gearing up for the uh, turmoil that COVID seems to be putting into our economy and, and the social awareness that's now coming. Mm -hmm. So this is a great spot to uh, subscribe to all of those. Exactly. So, and this is all free, correct? Yep. Yes. Awesome. So let's go back to find funding. Let's funding. say I'm a nonprofit and I'm looking to help with youth, especially since school, uh, the school year starting. 
uh, and I and I want to help support schools. How would I go about um, actually doing a search, Anthony? Sure. So keyword is the easiest, and what candidates trainers uh, say is focus on two things, and one maybe slightly third thing if you mm-hmm. want. What are you trying to do, and who are you trying to serve? The action okay. and the audience. You can also include where you're trying to do it, but it's a it's a minor issue. If you find a grantor that's funding nationwide and you meet okay. their needs, they're not worried if you're giving in Boston or giving in LA. Okay. So if you wanted to type in uh, youth education here and keyword and hit search, we'll see what kind of results we get. And then I'll show you how Candid applies their own subject matter to that issue. All right, so I got 8,400. That seems overwhelming. So how do I not yeah. knock this down? All right. So if you uh, scroll down a little bit, it may seem overwhelming, but if you scroll down a bit, you're getting the heaviest grant makers first, the ones Mm -hmm. with the most money to give out. Mm -hmm. It's usually the top five, and you could expand that search to view all. So you are, any grant maker is probably not going to apply to grants to all of those people. Even if you pulled up a hundred, a hundred's a lot. Mm-hmm. You, if you're buying a new coffee pot, you want to go to the store that offers the most coffee pots on their shelf. So these heavy hitters are your best chance. They have the money. They are giving out the most grants. In that right-hand column, you see the amounts they've given out in the past year and how many grants. If you were to scroll down to that list all the way down, you'd see that the last 200, 300 might have only given out one grant in that area. So you okay. might want to not apply to them just yet. And if you wanted to narrow your search down, if we scroll up, mm-hmm. we typed in the keyword search. We did uh, youth education. Yep. Now, Candid took that keyword and applied their own subject heading. So if you hit the advanced search uh, settings up on the right-hand side above the search button, yep, it, it will show how Candid applied your subject headings. Uh... That might help you narrow down or change your keyword to specific. Well, so I didn't you, want to do anything with orchestra or environmental education. Yeah, so you could take those out. Okay, cool. And um, then you could also type in the word education anywhere in there, and you would see the subject headings that they apply to it. And there might be something more specific. Maybe you were doing uh, K through 12 or, or whatnot. But if you were to start typing education, it would give you their subject headings. My computer doesn't want to type. Oh, oh, that's okay. There you go. That's yeah. It, it, they will suggest subject headings for whatever you type in. But now that we've taken out orchestra and the other, if you hit uh, search again, it should narrow down our search engine. And here you also see we Frozen. could narrow down by oh, we could narrow down by location, Boston, Massachusetts. But as we look at these grantors, we'll see the majority of them will give nationwide. Okay. So. So Candid's, Candid's philosophy, as I said, is, is ask early, ask often. Even if a grantor is not able to fund you this year, your project may be something near and dear to their heart, and they may fund next year. It's worth asking. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so we've got our search results. So... I had to like kind of like back out of it a little bit. It was being a little funny. I'm using Firefox, so I don't know if that's uh, an issue, but uh, yeah. So I knocked out those first two. I still have 8,100. And then let's talk about the not accepting applications. Yes. So grantors for a variety of reasons may uh, not be accepting applications. Mm -hmm. At the moment, grant, grant funders are required by law to give, I forget the exact amount, but X percent of their foundation's money out each year. I think so it's five they, or six percent. Yes, yes. And if it's something like the Gates Foundation, five or six percent of what they're handling is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so, but they, they may be doing that for a variety of reasons. They may have given out their max this year. Uh, they may be short-staffed at the moment and unable to take applications. So Candid has in, it, in its advanced search menu, even one of the sub menus, they hide it because they don't want you to use it, has a button that says uh, disregard all grantors who are not funding this year. But they actually discourage you from using that button because, yeah, that we, when we did the training, because they said next year, 
those grantors are going to start giving money in the areas that that they're interested in. And if your project meets that meets that need and they like it, by asking the year they weren't funding, you're they're already aware of you. Mm. That you've made the connection. Um, if you are in a rush and if you are shorthanded in your own office and if you don't want to bother with that networking, by all means, you could disregard the grantors who don't don't who aren't giving funding this year. But Candid encourages everyone to just ask, to just mention, would you consider us for next year? Mm -hmm. a, a brief email, introductory, maybe just maybe their standard email, mm -hmm. and that way your foot is in the door, so to speak. I was but yeah, you're right. Go ahead. Doesn't uh, Candid ha Candid on Grantspace used to have form letters or sample letters? Do they still have that? Oh, they do. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So under resources, you can click on sample documents. So if you're just like, you've seen my emails. So <laughs> like um, having like a sample letter of inquiry or a proposal budget, um, that would be really helpful. And so it's there on Grantspace again, which is available for free 24-7. Uh, you don't need the library to access this. And there are the documents there if you want to reach out to those folks. Um, I'm just going to click on a random foundation just to give an over, uh, yes. just so folks can look at this. So we can see what kind of information they can get. Cause that there's a lot of good info there. Yeah. And then, uh, we've got a few questions coming up in the chat. Okay. Well, let's pause here and see, let's see. Are there limits to the amount I can apply? F oh, I think this person means, um, or how many grants can I apply for? Would I have to do it every year? Um, hmm. I'll let you hit. Well, yeah, sure. So we're looking at the Comcast Foundation. Yep. So if we click on the menu button, we can get their information for um, RFP, RFPs and communication. That's where uh, we would see what they're, what they're giving out. But basically, it's uh, you can apply for as many grants as you want to as many applicants as you want. But I believe it's once that grant is given, you would have to reapply for granted another time with that same organization or a different organization. And in the RFPs here, it would specify if there was any kind of recurring grant. So here is your, here is what you want to look at: applications, RFPs, requests for proposals, before you even contact or apply, because it lists their giving limitations, what they will and will not fund, and basically how to contact them. So that gives you your overview. I'm like. If you were a religious school and they said no, no giving to religious education, then you would know you're not a match right off the bat. Um, if they listed a specific way to contact them, that's the way you would want to contact them, et cetera, et cetera. You, this is where you get your uh, your profile approach to, to who's there. So that was an academic scholarship. So I'm actually just going to pick a different one. Um, right. And I'm just going to pick a random, a random one now. The Annie E. Casey Foundation yeah. in Baltimore, um, Maryland. So I'm going to also ask, how many grants can I apply for? Do we? Yes, you. Uh, you can apply as many as you want. You can. You would have to do it every year. Tina Johnson, should I keep track of people not giving away funding this year, knowing to ask them next year? I I would say please do, but I would also say introduce yourself to them this year. Mm -hmm. Send either send a form letter or a, a, more, yeah, merge that form letter by saying my project looks like an excellent uh, opportunity for your grant funding. We meet all of your needs. We ring all of your bells. Mm -hmm. We would love to work with you in future. And that way you're already up in their, their uh, hemisphere. So which uh, we're looking at the Annie Casey Foundation, familiar. They do a lot of uh, public education and a lot of uh, PBS and a lot of GBH. Every time I, I enjoy your show, I think it comes partially from them. Yep. So notice that they also have after applications and RFPs, financials, but even more important down below, who's who. And that is where you can start networking. If you click on who's who, yep. that will give you a list of people to uh, who are on the board, names to contact. Now, it doesn't do it in the essentials, but in the standard foundations uh. structure online, if these folks have LinkedIn profiles, it, it will have the link to their LinkedIn profile. 
So with foundation directory essentials, you have to do some copy cut and paste. That, that, that's one of the drawbacks. Uh, but I'm a, we're also a big advocate of uh, LinkedIn. I am, at least in the KBL as well. Same. So here is where you see, who do I know? Who knows who I know? Who can I get my uh, initial letter of inquiry into? Same way you want to get a resume into somebody's eyeballs. And then underneath that are the two ways of all their communications channels. And then contact gives you their lines of contact. So you want to start with uh, with their applications RFPs. You want to oh, blowing up. <laughs> yeah. you want to go beyond that? Fidelity Investments is trying to call me. I hope I I hope I came into some money. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to underscore something that Anthony said. When you're applying for funding or support from any funder. Uh, it is an ongoing relationship, and it and it really does start before you get that money. Um, and really, funders want to give to someone they know, and they want to get a good sense of you. If you can provide an opportunity um, to actually get let them get to know you and to be able to stick out from all the other piles of applications that they that they get, um, that does sort of put you at towards the top of the stack and once you get the money a lot of funders um rem can remain hands-on especially as you move through a, pr a project particularly if it's a multi-year project so um it is worth knowing getting to know um oops i went the wrong way getting to know who's on uh the board and then Anthony, I had a question for you. I know yes. you can do this in the full one, but can I see other organizations that, let's see, the Annie E. Casey, Annie e. Casey Foundation has funded? Uh, you cannot do it in uh, Foundation Directory Essentials. See, in the results, you, uh, the results tab, mm -hmm. the two areas that don't uh, light up further are where is the money going? You can see nationwide, mm -hmm. but if you, in, in foundations directory online, you'd be able to click that link and it would open up all their grantors that they, oh. all the, the people they gave to, you could then explore those charities and see where else they're getting their money from. It's kind of a backwards reverse search. If you are interested in that, or if you're anything like that, I can do what uh, we're calling a concierge search for you because I, have access to the full foundations directory online through my own personal account. And if any of you know of another organization that maybe your, mm -hmm. uh, your organization mirrors or is similar to, I could look up that organization for you and see who they're getting the funding from. And we could, I could send you that list. Sure, and I just threw up the contact information on the screen again, just so people have it. And you can email us at ask at bpl.org. You can attend a drop in. Um, and there's a couple other things I did want to mention. Um, we're talking about getting funding, but if you're not quite there yet, you can request a 30-minute phone consult. Goodwin, who um, is a law, a law firm that we work with, and they provide pro bono legal services. And then you can also get mentorship from SCORE. SCORE does provide help for folks who have a nonprofit. Uh, so if there's yes. something specific, in particular, I was trying to say specific and in particular at the same time. Um, you can find a mentor and you can narrow it down by nonprofit. Um, I did want to actually uh, talk about something. You could if you really wanted to. Oh, where is it? Oops. Too many tabs open. If you really wanted to see who they funded, sometimes it is on the 990, but you got to go digging. <laughs> uh, and um, if you're not familiar with the 990 it's basically if you didn't file your taxes last week it's the tax form uh, that folks uh, or that nonprofits um, or foundations file each day and I forget what table it is but it does show the exact disbursement so you can go through and sort of see the financials from year to year and you can see the net investment of the income this is a little in the weeds, um, but if you would like help or finding um, the tax documents, um, we we can certainly help you. And this also is a great place if you're looking to get a job in a nonprofit 
uh, especially at the executive level, uh, occasionally you'll be able to see some of the salaries there. So um, just another tip. Uh, I thought I'd pop that out. Um, but the 990s are available uh, through f um, uh, FDO Essentials. So uh, sorry for the tangent. Uh, so hopefully folks... Uh, let's see. I don't see any other questions. Uh, yes, samples are the best. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so um, let's see. Is there anything else you'd like to point out in the profile here? Uh, you could, uh, the best advice I could give to anyone is after you've done your initial setting, fool around with the advanced search because that is really where you saw that when you mm -hmm. typed in education, you got music education. It's go into advanced search, play around with the terms, add and subtract. The only thing you'll be doing is extra typing. You won't be breaking anything. You won't be losing anything. Sure. Um, I, for, for instance, I had a, a person in my drop-in yesterday, not yesterday, uh, last last week, who was looking for um, to fund African American history. Oh, okay. So we we were teaching African American history, et cetera. And after talking with her, I found out she was actually uh, more interested. She was working for the African American Meeting House on the back. Oh, okay. Of the show. So we took out African American history and put in museums, and ah. uh, and listed that and found much more, many more grantors, um, because the museums fell under education and the museum funders were so generalized that they were happy to give be above and beyond a subject specific. So okay. how you ask, where you ask, it, it's key search terms that are done. You can add mm -hmm. your geographic focus. So in the African American meat house is in Boston, but uh, Candid would recommend asking for Massachusetts in general. Yep. Because there's probably funders in the larger area that would give statewide. But they also suggest leaving out your geography unless you're doing something solely specific. Uh, say an after school program for feeding um, uh, homeless kids in Atlanta, Georgia. You might want to specify that it's being run solely in Atlanta, sure. Georgia. But if you are funding uh, for museums, and here was the caveat for this search, the African American Meeting House was looking to expand their online presence for teaching. Mm -hmm. So it would not necessarily be Boston only. They were looking to give history nationwide. And when we look at those big funders like the Gates Foundation or Amazon Smile, you'll see from those maps that they give nationwide. They're not mm -hmm. solely interested in Boston itself. Sure, so don't sure. box yourself in. I did have to restart the page because it was being a little funny on my on my laptop. Sorry, guys. That's I good. wanted to show you as he was going through it. Um, the other thing I'd want to point out, and we, uh, you touched on the geographic focus. That's <laughs> different from location. And I'm going to pull up the search bar again so folks can see. Location is the actual physical location of the grant maker. So Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, where are they they must be based out of the Northwest somewhere. Silicon right? Valley, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you put in location, it's going to find Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And that's it. You're going to miss a whole slew of um, organizations if you use location. Um, so there, there might be a reason why you would use this. Let's say you're looking for folks that are similar to your organization, right? You could use location as a way of sort of being like, oh, you know, I work with homeless folks or women, um, in a domestic violence situation. And I want to see all of those in Massachusetts, for example, that would be an interesting way to generate a report. So I just wanted to point that Notice out. Notice there's a who's who uh, searchable field there. So if you meet someone with deep pockets at a cocktail party or a social network, sure. and they say they work on a board, you could type their name in there and find out the other boards they've mentioned. Mm -hmm. Now you have a personal contact. You can uh, look around for those other funders. Yes. I'm trying to think of um, a person that we could put in. Uh, hmm. Huh. Would uh, David Leonard be on any other boards other than the BPL? Our own, our own on show. Let's see. Is it David Leonard or David E. Leonard? Hmm. 
Let's run run up one and see see which what it retrieves. I the did of both just to see. Oh, it's 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 him and it's the associates, so it's old. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So. Ah, uh, Duncan um, S has asked, should I have a little speech prepared in case I meet someone at a networking event? And this is a uh, subject near and dear to my heart. I've given a few trainings on the elevator pitch. And it's the same advice they give job seekers. Uh, mm -hmm. You have, you may have a few moments to catch someone in an elevator or on a train ride or, and it does help to have a little speech ready to say who you are, what you're doing and why you're good at it. Um, one of our other wonderful products, lynda.com, which you have access oh, to the yes. website, has several classes, short class, video classes on the elevator pitch and speech. Um, and uh, actually, those classes are very good for drafting letters, too, because that elevator speech script could be your opening paragraph as to why you're seeking funding and why your project is so good to get that funding. So in order to find lynda.com, I'll just show you under catalog, you go to website and then you type in L-Y-N-D-A. And Harry Murphy quotes, it's like a giant scavenger hunt, a fun one, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll interrupt. Oh no. Um, it is kind of like a, a, a scavenger hunt. And I think that's why we both like research, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Let's see. So I have lynda.com here. And um, if you don't already have an account, you can sign in with your library card and PIN. Um, but I, I'll just show you, uh, I'll just search really quickly so you can see like ePitch. Oh, I might have to write elevator pitch up. Ah, delivering an authentic elevator pitch. How to create a perfect elevator pitch. Uh, and these you can watch on demand at 4 a.m., you know. <laughs> whatever when you get like wrapped up in the ennui of, you know <laughs> uh hanging out um so i think if I, while you're there i think there might be a few grant classes in lynch.com there is one specifically for education i know that so is grant writing uh for education is one um but I don't know if there's others. So if there are any education nonprofits, you can probably take away um, something for this grant writing for education uh, workshop. Um, but uh, there's also, I, we should also point out that grant writing is only one part of fundraising. Um, and while it can be a, you know, it can be helpful to get that sort of capital uh, going, um it should really only be one part of your funding mix and you can talk with a uh, score mentor about this about how you wanted to sort of approach this uh for some nonprofits, that means charging somewhat of a fee for some of their services if that makes sense for other non-profits it means having a sort of a tiered donation uh, ladder that uh, donors can apply to for some phone uh, or uh, for some uh, for some nonprofits that means chasing down people with large estates <laughs> so it depends sort of on uh, your funding strategy sort of depends on your capacity to administer the money uh, which is basically fancy talk for uh if you can handle the cash and how you can handle the cash um that's that's how you should get it um but you can see right here developing a fundraising video for nonprofits um and fundraising from individuals which is a different than fundraising from corporate organizations as well that is slightly different uh, a lot of corporations have foundations uh, Fidelity, for one, speaking of uh, earlier, uh, I, I know that they have one. And you can find those um, corporate foundations. We found the Comcast one earlier in FDO, correct? Correct. And uh, just to touch base on what you're uh, saying here, there's also, I've taken it recently, there are several classes in uh, grant space based on that, on, on uh, corralling several streams of income, focusing on how you want to find your income. The majority of uh, nonprofits do not focus solely on 
grandma's bank. They, they are the biggest bang for the buck if you can dig time, but uh, you want several steady streams of income coming in from different places at different times. Um, so there's, these are in their um, uh, introduction, to found, introduction to founding uh, or funding. So they touch on the same subject source. And uh, just the other day on NPR, there was a story uh, with the major donations to uh, the funds to mm -hmm. get the Black Lives Matter protesters out of jail. Several small state organizations suddenly found themselves inundated with more money than they ever thought they would have and were having mm -hmm. to train themselves how to handle it because it all came in all quickly so fast. And um, it's just an example of, of feast or famine. Each has its problems. Exactly. And again, that it's that note sort of from third sector New England about capacity building. And it's like, what can your organization handle? Uh, and like I said, if you have no employees and you're a working board, are you going to be able to field a $250,000 grant to run a program? Probably not. Um, <laughs> you know, but like if you have a team of 10 and you're working, you know, and you have established programs and like a pretty solid uh, theory of change or logic model that's been demonstrated to, to work um, and actually meet its stated goals, then you probably can. Um, and you can probably meet the, the goals of the funder. Because uh, the other thing I want to say about funders is you can, you can talk to them too and have an ongoing relationship. I mentioned this earlier, but funders don't want to see you fail. Um, kind of makes them look bad <laughs> but um so they want to see you succeed um so it's important to to have a, an ongoing conversation if you do choose this route of uh, funding and have that conversation uh those ongoing conversations with the funder so let's see it's 11 30 let's see if we have any more questions oh does does the score mentor, the one that stays with you for life, uh, the shorthand, yes, kind of. So I'll pull that back up. So once you are uh, a member of score, you, you, you are, have access to their services for life, not necessarily the same mentor. So let me just pull up that information again. So um, you can you can take advantage of their services and again you don't necessarily have a need a mentor to take advantage of score services they put a lot of information online including forms and templates as well as some uh online trainings that they have too um so i, I hope that answers your question let's see and then I think you answered Duncan's other question. Let's see. Um, hmm. I didn't know if you had any final thoughts. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to show um, my coffee cups. So oh, yeah. I showed yours. So we have yes. this nice little, oops, let me actually make it so you can see it. Uh, we have this nice little, um, uh oops hello we have this nice little um coffee cup that looks like a librarian oh or a book lover uh, oh looks like, wow nice it looks like my apartment with all those books piled in. <laughs> um there's our logo oh and then this is from last week someone got a nice coffee iced coffee spirit yes i see my iced coffee all the way at the end it's empty <laughs> now i love that sassy uh green m, &M mug but if you have any questions, you can email us at ask at bpl.org or you could tweet at us. Um, but uh, the ask at bpl.org is probably the best option. Um, the other thing I'm just going to pull up is the upcoming help that we have. So on 721 uh, and 728, we have two career help drop ins. Uh, one is a class on cover letter writing and the next one is just a discussion group. So if you just have any general questions and I'd like to highlight two things Anthony is involved with, um, the small business drop-ins and the grant seekers help. So can you talk a little bit about those, Anthony? Yes. Uh, so these are, uh, pre-COVID, uh, Amber and I would often be assigned hours out at our front desk to answer questions, and we'd gladly wait <laughs> patiently for someone to go. Uh, 
post-COVID, we, we can't get to that desk and neither can you, unfortunately. So we have set these small business drop. These that consider this, we are waiting at a reference desk at this given point in time for you to log in online and, and chat with us or make an appointment for later. Uh, we're doing them weekly. The small business drop-ins are with my colleague uh, and supervisor, Gregor Smart, uh, who's probably forgotten more about business research than I will ever learn. <laughs> And then the Grant Seekers Help is my own session on uh, Fridays at 11 a.m. where I will sit down and go through anything and specifically in Foundations Directory, Grant Space, give you one-on-one -on -one training. Uh, and that will be running through the end of August as well, where we'll, and we may be adding more sessions. Um, this Friday, for those of you who are anxious to learn more, just so you know, this Friday, the 24th, Gregor will be filling in for me on the Grant Seekers Help. Amber and I are gonna be doing some training elsewhere together that day. And uh, so he'll be doing both, but I will be back on the 31st. And if and you can always request a one-on-one -on -one session with me via ask. And I'm more than happy to set that up at your convenience. And I just put that information up at the top again, uh, just for folks who want to, um, who want to take advantage of that. Um, so, I always mentioned it. I always forget to mention this uh, at the, uh, housekeeping at the beginning. If you had questions and you were here, you were welcome to, to comment in the live chat. We are going to be wrapping up soon, but please email us at ask at bpl.org. Uh, you can also tweet at us and then uh, attend a drop in. Um, we are answering phone calls on a liter. And when I say answering phone calls, we are replying to voicemails. Uh, so, but, Honestly, the best way to get a hold of us is probably the ask at bpl.org um, uh, contact information. Um, so uh, thank you so much, Anthony, for joining me today. I'm so sorry you had all that trouble initially. <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, just know, all of you should know, Amber was frantically trying to get in touch with all of you. She she so did not want to disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it's a miracle we're still alive <laughs> um so next week's topic is up in the air um or not next week's next session's topic is up in the air and that will be on the third yeah let me check on that is that the third is that a monday yes and um uh look out for that that will be scheduled on the youtube soon and you'll see that in our um in our calendar as well uh if you want to sign up for updates and events actually um what i'm going to do is i'll show you if you want to uh learn about events each month um you should actually sign up for our newsletter on our website so i'm just going to go to bpl.org um, and all of the events that I talked about today will get sent to your inbox uh, within the first couple of days of each month in the adult learning newsletter. Um, so if you want to sign up for that while this loads, you can go to about on the main web page and subscribe to our newsletter. And all our stuff um, gets uh, tossed in that particular newsletter. Uh, and so there's the adult learning uh, the books and beyond. Uh, and if you have seniors in your life, uh, so folks who are a little bit older, the Never Too Late group has some great programming. Um, actually, some of it's pretty awesome and I wish I could go myself and I'm not a senior, but um, uh, I, I would sign up for that too. The concerts are amazing. Um, so, and you can sign up for that newsletter for free and get updates about uh, the happenings at the library and Kablik uh, specifically. So um, thank you so much for uh, attending today. And thank you, Anthony, uh, for, sure. you know, joining me today and uh, working with me on the uh, technical difficulties. Shout out to Amanda, uh, the AV tech who helped us out. Uh, and also thank you, uh, Mary and my yep. colleagues supporting in the chat. <laughs> Um, so thank you, Mary. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I guess have a great afternoon. Hi all.